Welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you want to check them out. Today's tutorial is technically another Valentine theme tutorial, but I was not able to get it edited in time for Valentine's Day, but I figured that you guys can replace the X's and O's with different cutouts such as flowers, bumblebees, even little honeycomb shapes, and totally transform it into a spring tumbler so it's not that Valentine theme. This one is a little bit different from the previous snow globe tutorial that I did. We are going to be using a little bit smaller confetti. This is still much larger than you would typically see in snow globes, but smaller than the heart confetti that I used before. We are also going to be blinging the epoxy drip that we applied, and I love how it turned out. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial but as always if y'all have questions about steps or materials that I use please feel free to ask in the comment section and I will come back and answer them for you but for now we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy guys so we are going to start with a snow globe tumbler and our hot fix tool these tumblers are from the stainless depot i believe they are the 24 ounce and they come with a hole pre-drilled in them or not necessarily drilled but the hole is already there so if you are using this for a regular snow globe you will not have to do anything with it but we are going to make this hole a little bit larger so I am just taking a skinny piece to my hotfix tool and I am just holding it in that plastic and kind of making a little semicircle. It's kind of hard to show this up close. It's just an awkward angle, but I am just using that tool to melt that plastic and I'm using my tweezers to pull out any little pieces that are just kind of barely hanging on. And we are just making this little semicircle large enough for our larger confetti pieces to fit down in it. You can trim off these pieces with your blade. I actually took it downstairs and sanded it really well. That way we would still have a smooth bottom. And for the confetti, this is the speed blade and force that I used. Y'all can pause it and screenshot it if you need to. And this is Cricut confetti foil. Um, I did kind of have a hard time finding this material. I'm not sure if they're changing the packaging or what they're doing, but I do link what I could find in the description below. Um, maybe in store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, they may have more options than what I could find online. But I just made a bunch of X's and O's and they're about an inch in height and width as you guys can see on my cutting mat and using my tweezers really helped me get them off my mat super easy so once we have everything cut out we will be ready to apply them to our snow globe so i'm going to start by adding some little sprinkles this is just a random mix that i threw together quite a while ago i do have some different sprinkles on the drunkflamingo.com and I just wanted a few in there. I didn't want a ton of sprinkles, but I just wanted something to break up the glitter and the confetti. And I'm just kind of picking and choosing what pieces I want in there. And then I'm going to put them back in my little bag so I don't get them everywhere. And 
and then I'm putting a couple different <laughs> hearts and rods in there as well. And then I'm going to start putting in my confetti pieces. I will say that adding the X's and O's were a lot easier than trying to get the large hearts in there. And I did kind of play with this. I did actually cut out X's and O's that were welded together and I did not like that. The X's and O's that I cut out together ended up kind of standing straight up versus across. So it just looked really funny. Um, so I ended up cutting them out individually and I like how that looks a lot better. I will also say that sliding your foils into a dry cup is a lot easier than trying to put these little foil pieces in after we add the liquid. So I would suggest adding as many of the foil pieces as you can before you add the liquid. So while I am finishing putting these in there, I will also add some glitter. I will tell you guys about this magical liquid. Um, magical liquid is an item from Elmer's. It is technically used for slime. It's a slime activator, but I found that when you mix it a little bit with water, it still keeps everything very, very suspended. And that is how I like my snow globes. I never liked making snow globes before because I hated that everything would always sink to the bottom 20 minutes after you shake it up. Um, and once everything sinks to the bottom, you can't really shake it back up until you get finished with your drink. So you're just walking around with a cup that looks like a little bit of liquid in it and then glitter all gathered at the bottom. So I used to use an Elmer's glue recipe and a few different things that I was happier with, but not, it wasn't the best that it could be until I came across, um, I, it may have been a TikTok that I saw somebody using this magical liquid. So I decided to give it a try and I love it. Now I will say that this magical liquid can be kind of finicky. I have had a couple people and even one of my friends purchase a couple of the magical liquid bottles from the hobby stores and it's no good it is very watery very liquidy it's not that thick gel like consistency that it's supposed to be every bottle that i've ordered off of amazon has been perfect so i'm not sure if it has just sat on the crafting shelves for a really long time and has just gone bad but when you order your magical liquid you want it to be almost like a pudding consistency um like a hair gel consistency you want it to kind of like plop out of the bottle and not pour so easily so once you are sure that your mixture is good you can just kind of play with the water how much you want to add you definitely want to add a bottled water if you use regular tap water that can cause mold to grow and i just like the kind of like a half and half mixture maybe a little bit more water than magical liquid but again that's just all on preference and here i am showing you guys how i get the bubbles to rise to the top i just use my little massage gun and just barely tap it on the side get those bubbles to rise i will also do this the next day i will let this sit overnight and degas so that all of those bubbles have risen to the top now here we are the next day. I have already degassed it. I have gotten all the bubbles out that I can see. So we are going to go in with a sheet of acetate. I just trace the outline with a paint pen, cut out my little acetate sheet, and then I'm going to remove the paint marker with some acetone. That way, whenever we apply it to the cup and apply glitter over top of it, if you're using a lighter glitter, you're not going to be see, seeing that black marker underneath. You also want to make sure that the base of your snow globe is very clean. Next, I'm going to take just a little bit of UV resin 
and just kind of go all along that opening and we're going to place that acetate sheet right on top make sure that it is secure to that uv resin we are going to cure that And next, I am going to take a little syringe and I am just filling up the rest of the air pocket with this syringe. I did notice that I had a little bit of the acetate that was not covered with UV resin. So I just applied a little bit more UV resin, cured it really quick. And now I'm just filling up the rest of the, this little air pocket in the bottom with my syringe. It's a needle, so it kind of punctured the acetate. But once I fill it up, I'm going to go right back in with UV resin over that hole that this little syringe made so that everything is nice and covered. We won't have any leaks. So I'm just covering this little hole and once that is cured, again, we are just cleaning everything off. And you can either mix your glitter in a little cup or you can mix it on the bottom of your cup. Either way is fine. I am just mixing a little bit of the same glitter that we used for the interior which is Cowboy Colada, also from The Drunk Flamingo. And I am using CCDIY's UV resin. Um, I've tried a lot of them in the past, and this one I like the best so far. It just cures really quickly. There's no tack. I use this for my pins as well. And next, I'm going to take my logo tag from Mizzy's Doodles. I was just making sure that I was going to have enough room to apply this to the bottom and apply another layer of UV resin on top and everything still be flat and flush. So I'm just scraping off the backing right now. And I'm just going to take my tweezers, place it in the center as well as I can center it. And then we're going to cure this. And then we're going to apply our clear layer of UV resin on top of this layer. I always like to apply a final clear layer over any of my bottoms, just so it is nice and smooth and shiny, just like the rest of the tumbler is going to be. Obviously this one is just a plastic tumbler, but if this were a glittered epoxy tumbler, the bottom would also match the sides. So I'm just making sure that that is touching all of the sides. And then we are going to cure this under our UV light. And then the base of our tumbler is going to be complete. If you wanted to stop here, you definitely could do that. But I wanted to take it up a notch and we are going to be applying some drips. And then of course, blinging them. So I also wanted to show you guys, since this has set for a while, some of the pieces have started to gather around the edge because it is a little bit thinner, but I am just taking my massage gun again. Y'all can see how much movement that creates. And I am just kind of loosening some of those pieces that may have got trapped up top when we initially started to fill everything. So I just wanted to get everything loosened before I taped everything off and applied our epoxy. And for my drips, I'm going to be using Artistry's Fast Set. If you guys have not tried Artistry's Epoxy, it is my favorite epoxy right now. I do have a discount code and their link is below if you guys want to try them. 
I like how you get very minimal bubbles. It cures in one and a half to two hours, depending on temperature. And there is little to no odor. And when I do drips, I typically mix up about 15 milliliters. I like to have more than I would need versus not having enough. And I was making these drips longer and a little bit thicker than my normal tumblers or like the rim was thicker because I was going to be blinging it. So I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. So with facet, I just like to mix up both parts. And once I get everything well incorporated, I don't necessarily mix for a certain amount of time. I just kind of watch my epoxy and when there are no more striations, then I know that everything is well incorporated. And once everything is incorporated, I'm going to add some mica and a little bit of white snow dispersion color. I just wanted that creamy white look that matched the interior of our tumbler so that when there were any spaces that you could see through the crystals it would still match the cup and wasn't going to be a different color So we are just going to mix this up and then I basically just let it sit until it's ready. I do stir it every three to five minutes just to break up that heat. And while that is sitting, I'm going to tape off the rim. On these tumblers, you can kind of see there's a little lip and that is basically what I taped off. And I also tested the lid to see kind of if the lid came down over the tumbler because if your lid comes down over the tumbler, you may need to start your drips at a different spot. So now this epoxy has sat for a little while. Y'all can see it is definitely thicker. So with facet epoxy, it's a little bit different than applying drips with regular epoxy. With regular epoxy, I basically let it get as thick as I can let it get where there is very minimal movement. But with facet, it's a little different in that it may appear liquidy in the container, but as soon as you take it out and apply it to your tumbler and it hits that cooler air, it starts to thicken up a lot more. I have just worked with facet for my drips for quite a while. So I kind of just know when the right time to apply the drips is. Um, it's really just kind of a trial and error. You'll definitely figure out when the right time to apply them is after you use facet a couple times. I also always test my epoxy on the side of my mixing cup to see how far or how little it's going to fall. So I'm just checking this out now, seeing where my drips are falling. I'm just adding a little bit more epoxy where I want the drips to fall further down the tumbler. And y'all can see that I used all of that 15 mils of epoxy. I probably could have even used more. Um, so next I'm going to take my torch and just pop those bubbles. This is a plastic cup, so we will have to be careful. We don't want to melt the tumbler. And then I immediately pull off the tape so we get a nice, clean, sharp rim. And next we're going to let the epoxy cure completely. And then I'm going to go back and apply the crystals. So this is the final piece to this tumbler. If you guys did not know, I actually started out as a blinger before I even did tumblers. I probably was a blinger three or four years before I even started making glittered tumblers. So these are just some crystals that I have. I am using a mixture of 
rose, dark rose, crystal clear. I think there's some champagne in there. These were just basically from a dump bucket that I had. And I literally went through and picked out all of the pinks, all of the, um, I think I had some purple AB in there. I was just picking out all colors that I thought would look good with this cup. And my adhesive of choice is Liquid Fusion. It is the best glue that I have found to crystallize things. I typically order it off of Amazon. They used to have it in stores years ago, but they stopped offering it, at least in my area, in store. So I do have to purchase it off Amazon. And how much adhesive you apply to your tumbler at once really depends on how quickly you work. I am a fairly quick worker, um, so I can apply a decent amount of adhesive and still be able to bling everything pretty quickly so the adhesive does not dry. But I would say a good place to start is about a two inch section. That's what I like to work in about a two by two section. And with liquid fusion, I like to apply the adhesive and then wait, um, you know, 30 seconds to a minute or so. And the liquid fusion kind of starts to get a little tacky. So it's not so liquidy. So that when you apply the crystals, it just stays where you put it and it's not going to be falling down the tumbler. And I always like to start with my rims first. That way we will get a nice straight line all the way around the tumbler. And then you can kind of move those crystals down and fill in that empty space. I am also using sizes SS16 to probably SS6, which is about two to four millimeters in size. So the more crystals that you use, the better the sparkle is going to be, obviously, because there are more crystals to reflect light and give that sparkle. But again, that is just kind of going to be your preference and what you feel comfortable working with. Some people don't like working with the teeny tiny stones. Some people do like working with teeny tiny stones. But if you are a beginner blinger, I would definitely recommend starting out with a smaller project like a um, phone grip or a keychain or something like that. Just to see if it's something that you do want to do. You don't want to start on a tumbler or even something like this and halfway through it decide blinging is not for you. <laughs> But to me, it's very relaxing. I really enjoy blinging. I don't do it too much anymore just because I'm mainly focused on teaching and doing tutorials. But there's always a, a few times that I come back to blinging. And if you guys did not know, I'm actually going to be a teacher in the All Stars of Bling event. I will link that down below in case you guys have not heard about it. But it's going to be several different blingers from all over the country. And we are going to be putting on a virtual event. It is being put on by Jesse and Maureen. They own Diamond Fire Rhinestones and Bling on the Chaos. They are both super sweet. If you guys have not heard of them, definitely check them out. So you guys can kind of see that I am just blinging the top section of the tumbler and then we're just blinging the drip right below the section that we did. And I am just going to do this all the way around the tumbler until it is complete. So I will speed up this next part because it's basically the same thing over and over, but this is just a little time lapse of the last half of the tumbler.
but for every section, you can kind of see how I'm outlining everything. I'm outlining the top rim, then I'm outlining the drips, and then I'm taking the little crystals and we're filling in the middle space. This is, again, just so that the top rim, as well as the outlines, are going to be a straight uniformed line. And I get asked all the time, but my work mat is a photo prop mat from Artistry Epoxy. My discount code does work on those. If y'all want to check them out, they have a lot of different styles. But once our bling drip is complete, then our tumbler will be finished. These are some finished pictures. I love how it turned out. I think it's super cute, really fun. If you guys decide to do one of these for spring, please post them because I love to see what you guys come up with. And of course, if you have questions, y'all can ask me here or in one of my tutorial groups. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or my damn fancy tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.